everybody, Wayne here. In today's overview and review, we are going to take a look at Caesar, Seize Rome in 20 Minutes, designed by Paulo Mori and published by PSC, aka Plastic Soldier Company Games. Um, this is the second game from Paulo Mori that I've covered, the other being Blitzkrieg, World War, World War II in 20 Minutes. Um, this game also features a solitaire bot designed by David Terzi. Um, David has designed many solo modes for other games, um, some Euro games, um, the previously mentioned Blitzkrieg, and also the, <clears throat> excuse me, the Undaunted series from David Thompson. Now this game, as I'm sure you can tell from the cover, from the map, from the name of it, um, it's themed around the Roman Republic civil war between Caesar and Pompey. In this game, you're placing influence tokens on various locations on the board with the goal of gaining control of each one of these regions or provinces, depending. Um, the, the terms are used interchangeably. Uh, whichever side has placed all of their control tokens first wins the game. So let's go ahead and do a quick overview. I already have a unboxing, one of my recon videos, and a full tutorial playthrough for an in-depth look at the game. So we'll do a quick overview. I'll cover my pros and cons, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. So let's get to it. All right, let's take a look at the map here first. So I have it set up with the province bonus tokens um, placed in each of the different provinces or different regions. Um, you can see their names here, you know, Talia, Slia, Africa, Egyptus, Syria. You get a pretty quick idea of kind of how the map is set up and where they are. Um, within each of these provinces, I mentioned the province bonus tokens, which these, and obviously you can see they have different um, iconography on them, when you take control of a province, you're going to get that bonus token, which you can go ahead and, well, you have to either discard or use right away for a special effect. Um, the actual areas around here, you can see, also have different icons. What those are, is those are where you place your influence tokens. Now, I have influence tokens here. You can see the red is going to be Caesar. You can also see his control tokens with his name on them. Um, and then blue is Pompey. They go in the draw bags here. So you're gonna place influence tokens in the bags, and then every turn, you're gonna draw. Now, when you play single player, you know, you have, you'll have two available, and then you'll draw one after you've played one. Um, when the bot has special rules that he will go ahead and flip one of these command tiles over, it'll tell him how many to draw, how many to resolve, and then does he discard any. You're drawing those influence tokens from here, you're having them available for you, you're then playing them on these open locations. Now the icons have to match. So say these galley, you know, galley icon here has to match to go on the galley place on the board. Now what's interesting is you see it has split, split numbers, right? So this one's the same, three, three, three on this side, three on the other side. So we would go ahead and place it here. Each side's gonna get three influence for you, for three for Africa, three for Aegea. However, you know, obviously say this one, six, zero. So you place this one, one province is going to get six influence from you a lot, but one's going to get zero. So you have to be mindful of that when you're placing them. Um, basically, once every open spot is filled, you're going to go ahead and add up the influence. Whichever side wins it gets the province bonus token. Then they get to place one of their control tokens in the open spot there. And there's rules for if you're adjacent, you get to add an additional one. Um, and then the actual province bonus tokens have different effects. So something like the scroll here, is a tactics you get to take an extra turn um, the earned pottery is wealth you get an extra you get to draw an extra influence token might the cross spears or pelum you get to go ahead and flip over a opponent's influence token and probably the most powerful is the senate one which you can see there's one here in italy there's also some other locations um, again you do them up randomly um, if you when you get that if you go ahead and take control of that province you get to actually put control markers under it. So not only do you get the control markers spent on the location, but you get to put them under it. Um, once you have spent all of your control markers here, control tokens, and they're off the board, whether they're under a Senate bonus token or they're on a location, first one to do that wins the game. All right, pros and cons. Starting with my cons first. Um, first thing, the rule book, it's okay. Um, there's a couple issues. So... There are some discrepancies between the online rulebook, um, the one that's linked on BoardGameGeek specifically, and the printed rulebook. 
Um, an example is the terms landlocked or central province. So on the online rulebook that, that you can you know download from Board Game Geek, which I know a lot of people do, I do that often, which I did, and then I printed out some of the pages and whatever. You know, there's a term that's in there is landlocked. Now there's the questions on Board Game Geek. Then you're seeing them, we're saying, what's landlocked mean? Because it's never described. What does that mean exactly? Well, when you actually look in the printed rule book, instead of using the term landlocked, it'll just say central, um, central province. Also, in the um, online rule book, it doesn't say province. It says, I believe it says regions, landlocked region. But then say in the rule book that comes with the printed game, it says central province. So, and that's why I talk about the, prop, the term provinces and regions used interchangeably, which also makes sense because at the time of this, you know, civil war between Caesar and Pompey, not all these areas were Roman provinces yet, technically. Um, so for game terms, understand that. But just so you're, you're aware, if you're especially if you're using online rulebook, then you get this one. What's landlocked central? Basically, all it is is those are the ones the regions in the middle here: Crete, Aegea, Italia, Sicilia, Sardinia. That those are the ones that are surrounded by other um, provinces or regions. So, anyway, just you know, like I said, a little discrepancy where it's like okay, and they create confusion, right? Um, kind of related to that is a solo bot. It's simple enough, you know, but sometimes the directions. They either don't make sense or they just throw you off. So an example is the rule book will say, you know, use the token with the highest or lowest combined value. Well, the problem is, is that when you look at the tokens, so the the tokens here, there this is a, a laurel, which you can see there's no icon for that. That's like a wild card. So that's different. And those are here, here, I'm trying to find another one here. Okay, but those always add up. So two things, though. those always add up to four. See, so three, one, four, zero, two, two. Well, the regular influence, so see here is swords or um, gladius, shields, four, two, six, three, three, six. They always add up to six. So there is no highest or lowest combined value. They're always either six if they're a regular one or four if they are a wild card. So again, not, you know, not sure why that's in there. It just creates confusion. Again, it's another... Thing that I've seen as a threat on Board Game Geek, so just be aware of that. Um, second con, the map, it's pretty boring. Um, this is also a problem with Blitzkrieg. You know, Blitzkrieg had a, just a really boring map. Now, I don't want to come down on the artist overall. I'm not sure if he did the map as well because, you know, the artwork on the box, which um, I'll have the cover pop up, and then, like, say the artwork on the draw bags is just fun, right? It's fun. It's vibrant, you know, kind of cartoony, but not out of control. Just, you know, very like stylized. I love it. I absolutely love this. Well, why is the artwork on these so fun and the cover and everything so fun, but then the artwork on the map is like barely qualifies as artwork, right? It's just like a green, blue, and then divided with black lines and labeled. It's like, no, there, it could probably look a little better. Um, yeah, so that's that. <laughs> Finally, um, my last con is the theme. You know, it doesn't really influence the gameplay. You know, the theme is, yeah, Caesar and Pompey are fighting. Roman Civil War. But, you know, it doesn't influence the game, right? There's no difference between being Pompey versus being Caesar. It's not like, well, you know, Pompey gains, I don't know, an extra influence if there's a Senate token because he had support of more senators, you know, or... Caesar has maybe starts with a extra starts with a, a might token because he had you know the more experienced and greater armies and more loyal armies, um, etc. You know you maybe you could spice it up, make it a little bit more um, unique in between the sides. Otherwise, the theme is there, but really just it just doesn't influence the gameplay. So, all right, onto my pros. So the game itself, you know, very quick to learn and play. I'd say faster even than Blitzkrieg, Blitzkrieg, excuse me, faster to learn and faster to play. You know, after you play through one game, you really have all the mechanics down. Yeah, you'll probably need to consult the um, province bonus tokens chart on occasion, you know, just to remember what each of these does. Although it's not complicated and there's really only, there's four of them in the base game and there's two in the expansion, which I'll, in expansions, I'll talk about those in a second. Um, so not that much there either. Um, the... And, and obviously, you know, when you're playing solitaire, which I do, and this review is focused on, you will have to follow the solo flow chart, you know, which you'll have to, you know, read out of the rule book, but you don't only have to flip back and forth, right? It's a small rule book. 
you can have the solo bot section open and that's going to cover you, you know, 90% of the time, especially like I said, once you play through the game once, you basically have this open, these two pages and you're good to go. Um, second pro, the solo bot, talking about that, it's well done. You know, it's not perfect. You can outsmart it. You can kind of lead it around a little bit. But if you're finding yourself able to outsmart it on a cert, you know, when you have the, the base set up, you can also stack kind of stack the deck against you by playing on harder difficulties. So with these command tiles, there are other ones. There's, you know, easy, normal or medium, and then a harder difficulty. So the command tiles will start giving the bot extra, like basically equivalent of extra turns in a row. You know, they'll be drawing multiple influence tokens and playing multiple ones on a turn as opposed to you. You know, you can only play one. Basically, you play one, you draw one to replace it. So I like that flexibility with the bot. Um, also, speaking of kind of, I mentioned before, the expansions, the game comes with two built-in expansions. Now, they're small. Really, they just add uh, two different types of province bonus tokens with some rules that go with them. Um, it's poison tokens and then the centurion tokens. But again, having that variety and having, you know, flexibility and being able to add in stuff to the game once you're comfortable or once you want a little bit more to it, you know, that's always welcome. All right, my final thoughts. So, you know, Caesar, Caesar Rome in 20 minutes is a game that it solos well enough. Um, but I feel it would likely really shine as a two player game. You know, I have to admit, I did enjoy Blitzkrieg more when playing Solitaire, although that doesn't mean I dislike Caesar either. You know, I did enjoy my time with it. I just feel that, you know, I think it would really shine as a two-player game. I feel like it has a, beside, more than Blitzkrieg, it has a true, like, back and forth, you know, feel like a chess-style feel of, hey, I'm placing an influence token, you're placing one. Um, you know, in Blitzkrieg, you were kind of building up the areas a little bit more longer term. And here, I mean, some of these areas, look at Syria, it only has two areas. So you place one, they place one, boom, it's closed. It's done. Um, so I feel like it, it kind of resolves faster, which I feel like that could be more fun back and forth with a, another person as opposed to just a bot. Um, now, you know, my channel, I focus almost entirely on solitaire war games. Meaning, I feel like most people who watch this review, not all of you, because some of you may come from the games page who aren't, you know, necessarily subscribers to my channel, but most of you are likely war gamers. Um, now, if you look at this game strictly through a war game lens, you likely won't be satisfied. Um, you know, the theme's kind of pasted on, you know, it's not really direct conflict. You're just send down tokens that you add up influence numbers and figure out who controls an area, right? It's, it's not much of a war game. However, if you look at Caesar as you know an inexpensive light quick playing kind of competitive game I might mean, talk about that back and forth um, with a historical theme i think you'll see where this game does shine you know caesar is the type of game that you play you know either in between larger games right kind of a palate cleanser something really set up play quick whatever or you can play like a bunch of times in a row, you know, compare your wins and losses, whether, and that's even whether you're playing in solitaire or with somebody, right? Like you could just sit there and, okay, we're going to play, you know, best out of five style. Now, if that sounds like the type of game you want in your collection, I do believe it's worth picking up. Know what the game is though, before you get into it, you're not getting something in depth, you're not getting a simulation, but if you like those things I've talked about, kind of that historically themed, you know, light strategy game, this could be one for you, so... Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, I do have a full tutorial playthrough of the game. It's simple enough anyway, but you can go check that video out. And of course, my recon um, unboxing video. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. If you play this one, let me know. Or if you're interested in it, let me know below. Um, you know, sometimes it's nice to have these sort of light, quick playing little strategy games. Not much of a real war game, but sometimes these are a good part of a collection as well. Just kind of balance things out. So, um, let me know below what you think. Otherwise, until next time, guys. Later.